So what's my angle after you've heard all these great speakers talking about all the technology and the changing buyers and things like that? So I kind of feel that my team and I, we're the, um, we work at the coal face. So we create the, um, the interactive presentations, the interactive experiences that sales and marketing use um, at what we think is the most important point. And that's when they're face-to-face in, <coughs> -face in front of the customer. So before I start sort of drilling into that, I wanted to talk to you just very quickly about online dating. <laughs> now, I'm not an expert on online dating, but I actually think there's quite a lot of similarities between this and sales and marketing. So I'd probably better explain why pretty quickly. I think technology has really transformed both of these areas. With online dating, you've got these great platforms. With marketing, you've got these great platforms. You can put up all your messages. You can reach out to so many more people. You've got analytics. You can find out what they're looking at. You can tweak your profile. You can tweak your messages. Um, you can already start sort of tentative conversations. But there comes a point when you're going to have to meet face to face. And that's really when the magic happens. That's when you've got to convert. That's when you've got to win the business or win the date. One of the two. So for those people that maybe don't like the dating analogy, I'm just going to show you a couple of hard facts. So this is from um, the B2B Marketing Report, which is an influential um, magazine. They survey thousands of B2B businesses all over the world, as well as agencies. And this was one of the questions. And this was the answer. Meeting with suppliers was the most important element for B2B, for the buyer. And if you want one more, there's this. That's a whopping number, 97% put a great deal of importance on those presentations. So, you know, I'm sure we all sort of understand this, but I think sometimes we actually forget how important those those face to face interactions are. We get consumed with all the technology and all the other things going on that we're supposed to be doing. And sometimes it gets overlooked. So I want to ask you a question. Just shout out the answers. What, why do we do presentations? I mean, what is the purpose of a presentation? Educate, Educate connect with customers. Structure. Structure. Get a decision. Get a decision. Convince. Convince. Yeah, I mean, these, these are all good things. These are all part of, part of the mix. But I actually think there's one thing that nobody's said that is paramount uh, beyond all of these points. And that's action. The sole purpose of a presentation is to get someone to do something, to take the action you want them to take. And it probably seems quite obvious. Maybe it's an easy question to answer. But in all my years, 25 years of working on presentations, with many, many different businesses across many sectors. I can honestly say there isn't one company that I've come across that have actually really understood this and nailed it. And it's not that easy a thing to do. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you an example or we'll talk you through an, an example of this. <laughs> I guess we all know who the guy on the left is, OJ. Does everybody know who this guy on the right is? Not the copper in the background. It's Johnny Cochran. It's his lawyer. So, in my opinion, I think that trial lawyers are probably the best people in the world at creating presentations, at delivering presentations. They truly understand the meaning of action. So, again, I'm going to ask you, what was Johnny Cochran's action in this trial? Hmm? To get a not guilty verdict? Yeah. Well, yes, ultimately the strategy was to get a not guilty verdict, but 
go a little deeper. I mean, what did he have to do to get that? Hmm? He had to make an argument. Yep. Create doubt. So we start to drill down. So Johnny Cochran, he's got 12 jurors. He's got 12 individuals with 12 different perspectives, different biases, all of which he's got to talk to. They're his audience. Actually, Johnny Cochran didn't care whether O.J. Simpson was guilty or not. That actually is totally irrelevant. All he's there to do is to get an acquittal. So you could say his action is to persuade 12 jurors that there's enough reasonable doubt to get, cast a, uh, to get him acquitted. But you've got to look deeper. It goes deeper than that. That's pretty good. But how do you get to that point? What actually was his action? Do you actually know what, what he based that case on? Was it based on the facts? The prosecution pretty much had it locked down. I mean, the evidence was overwhelming against OJ. And they presented a very, very clear fact-based case. Johnny Cochran, at the time of this, we had the Rodney King issue with the police beating up Rodney King. We had the LA riots. He had the opportunity to take advantage of that. So what he did was, is he realized that with those jurors, if he could persuade them that that police case could possibly have been swayed because of racial bias, then he could then convince them that there was reasonable doubt to get him acquitted. So on the face of it, his action, yeah, let's get OJ off. But actually you drill down? No, it was to convince 12 people to return a not guilty verdict. But actually it wasn't even that. What it was was to convince 12 people that there might have been racial motivation in that case. It was also a very emotional subject. It was very emotionally charged. Emotion is a really important thing and is often forgotten in presentations. I don't care what business you're in, you can be in finance, tech, cybersecurity, emotion runs throughout all of these. We're all individuals, we all have perspectives, we all have biases. He tapped into that and it destroyed the prosecution case. They couldn't come back against it. And rightly or wrongly, OJ got off. So action, what he did was, is once he established that as his key action, he built his entire case, he built his entire presentation back from that point. Every single step, every single thing that the prosecution said, he had it lined up, building up to this point. Now presentation is exactly the same. If you got an action, if that's your objective, your entire presentation from beginning to end has to build up to that point to get that person to do what you want to do. That's your narrative, that's your structure, that's your, your story effectively. And it dictates the structure, the messages you need to deliver, the order you deliver them in, and the visuals that you use to support that story. So point one, action. Now what I want to do is I want to show you a, um, a, uh, an advert which in my opinion is probably the best example of storytelling I've ever seen and probably yet to see. And it's one of the reasons actually why I do what I do is because of this. Does anybody remember it? It is 1986, so <laughs> Lee, you'll definitely remember it. <laughs> so that was an advert that ran for The Guardian on TV. Um, I mean, you can talk about that for hours. There's lots of different aspects around that, why that was so good. But for me, there's one key element of that, 
that is really crucial and underpins a lot of what we do and what I'm going to talk about coming up. And that's perspective. So in the ad, very simply, you've just seen it, we get three a single scenario from three different perspectives. And in each case, we're coming to a different conclusion. Whether we like it or not, it's just what our brains do. We immediately sum up what we see and we make a conclusion. So we can use perspective within stories to channel ideas and affect outcomes. But more importantly, and the bit about perspective, is that we've all got a perspective. We've all got a bias based on a multitude of, of different things from age, sex, job roles, work relationships, personal relationships, what we like, what we don't like, a, a real plethora. And so do our customers. They're just people working in businesses. They're just people that we're presenting to. So I'm going back to my lawyer analogy. I, I, I never did law, I have no desire to do law, but there's some quite good um, ideas in there. Anybody recognise this film still? 12 Angry Men. Has anybody ever seen it? <laughs> One or two people. 12 Angry Men, very quickly, it's a story about a boy who's up for murder. Um, on the face of it, he's guilty completely through and through. Case closed. There's 12 jurors, 11 of which have voted to convict him. Old, uh, there he is in the background, holding on. He doesn't agree. So he's going to make it his role to talk to each of these people individually within here, the biases that they've got, the evidence that they've got that this boy had done it, and he addresses them individually. He goes through every single point with them, whether it's around physical things or whether it's around an emotional aspect, he goes through every single point. Because ultimately, they're 12 men, all with their own perspective, all with their own bias. So imagine that's your next customer meeting. Hopefully, they're a bit more smiley than that but I have actually sat in pitches where you're faced with a load of board members looking pretty sour and grumpy and just want to get it over and done with. So how, how do you address 12 different people, all with different ideas, all with different perspectives, different knowledge levels, different understanding of who you are, your product, or what they need as a business or an individual? So the key to that for us is interactivity and this is where the game changer comes in because with interactivity you can move your presentation from a broadcast me just telling you what's going on what you have to do what I think the issue is and it turns it into a con uh, conversation it creates a personal experience you're able to address individual concerns you can tailor the conversation around the customer you can ask questions, you can change the direction depending on what the responses are. And you can change the outcomes depending on that conversation. You can actually have different actions depending on who you're talking to. You can drive through, you can drill through to different sections. Interactivity completely changes the presentation, the conversation. You've heard this from all of our speakers. Um, it really does. And this is something that we do every single day with people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few quick examples um, of how we've used it. This is uh, a company, Isotrack. Probably don't know it, but basically it puts in the technology into home shopping vehicles. So 90% of every vehicle that delivers your shopping has got Isotrack systems plugged into it. The problem they had, or the problem they have, is that... There's a lot of a challenger brands, new technologies coming in. They kind of rested on their laurels. They had such huge market penetration um, and they were very product focused. Their presentations were basically pictures of black boxes with cably bits hanging out them and horrible data sheets and things like that. On top of that, 
they did actually have meetings with potentially 12 people and up. Because if you're a business, let's say a Sainsbury's or an Asda, you have a lot of different departments involved with the logistics. There's the HR, there's legal, there's compliance, um, a whole facet. If I can get my little pointer to work. You can see the grey section. Where's the button? Never mind. The grey section, they're all the different departments they're talking to. And in the green, these are kind of the five key areas that any company involved in any kind of distribution is going to be concerned about. Productivity, sustainability, risk management, all of these things. So with this tool, and here's me when I get going, <laughs> they can quickly tap into here and they can start to tap through into different areas. You get all the key issues coming up on the right about what's involved with sustainability. They can even drill into different sections. So immediately, depending on who's in the room, depending on the kind of questions, Mr. Client, you know, out of these five main things, you know, where is your business really struggling? Is it around risk management? They can go straight into it. They can bring up some of the key areas around risk management. So it, it opens up a conversation. The idea about a lot of presentations and meetings is you want to get that intelligence back. You really want to get people to start talking. You want them to open up and start letting out these secrets and stuff like that. And given the opportunity, most people will start talking and telling you what you need to hear because that then feeds back not only into the conversation later on when you start drilling into solutions, you know, getting on the road, day in the life, you can start to tailor your conversation. But it also means that you can update your marketing campaigns. Going forward, you can start to tailor. You can start to drill in on what's really important. Another quick example, this is taking a slightly different route. So this is for Fujitsu. Um, a number of years ago, they set up a cyber security division. So they had no presence in the market. So what they needed to do was actually to go out and talk to customers and kind of find out where the pain points were around cyber, what their thoughts were around this, you know, where was the company going, what were the issues. This, this was a fact-finding mission, really, for them, to know how to then feed that into their product development, where they need to focus. So with this one, we took the approach of sort of taking a very sort of top level view, starting with some very broad questions and then starting to narrow down, drilling down on the focus. So again, using the interactivity, we've got the navigation across the bottom. They could start the conversation with trends. What are the things impacting generally businesses as a whole? Is it around big data? Is it around mobility? Have you got issues around globalization or trying to get all your teams onto mobiles that they're sending all kinds of um, information they shouldn't be? And then from there, they can start to drill down again, so into challenges. So, you know, Mr. Customer, where are you finding your challenges? You can pose some questions to drill down. Is it around big data? Or maybe it's around compliance. You're also helping the customer there because you're giving them cues already for them to start thinking, well, actually, yeah, you know, maybe mobility is an issue. And you can keep sort of drilling down. Well, OK, well, these are kind of the top level questions that we need to be talking about. If mobility is an issue, you know, what are the costs? Do you need to start thinking about flexibility? So you can see the interaction is, is quite a simple tool. There's, there's nothing clever, there's nothing fancy, but you do need to think about how you set it up. It's all about that action and building back, building your case up. What do you need to know? What do you need to find out? How are you going to tailor that message specifically to that individual? It doesn't matter if there's 10 there, you are talking to individuals and you need to address all of them because you don't know who's the ultimate decision maker. Who's going to be your champion? Who's going to remember these and go and talk to someone else? It's not just about the people in the room. It's about everybody. It's about the wider buying community, the buying committee around them. This one's a little bit different. 
Has anybody seen IBM's outage video? Oh, we've got one. Oh, well done, Stuart. Brownie points. <laughs> So this uses interactivity, but in a, in a slightly different way. So what IBM have done is, rather than a day in the life of, they've done uh, a night in the life of a uh, very plucky, poor heroine, heroine, uh, who's looking after a, uh, a power station. And I've just taken one of the, uh, one of the scenes from the video but basically it takes you through a scenario. So she's just on the night shift, there's a terrible storm coming in, and lo and behold, the power station starts to, to fall apart, things start going wrong. So what IBM cleverly have done is they've integrated some of their tools um, around sort of mobility and communications, and they've posed these scenes, and then you'll see in a minute when that stops, you then get these little interactive hotspots that come up and they very kindly give you about five seconds to choose what you're going to do. And then you've got to make your choice, and then that takes you down another path. So you get another video based on the consequences of what you've selected. But at the same time, it's illustrating different parts of how IBM's technology can actually help businesses. So, you know, this is quite a fun way of, of, of telling a story, really, and really drawing in audiences, and, you know, you really feel part of part of the action and stuff like that. Um, but the other thing is you don't have to, there's a sort of a close up of the scene of her choices, evacuate personnel, disable the cooling system. I'll tell you that if you evacuate the personnel, the cooling system blows up. So you've uh, taken out a couple of hospitals and stuff like that. So choose the uh, evacuate, um, sorry, choose the uh, cooling system shut down first, then worry about the personnel. I'm not sure that's good with um, health and safety and stuff, but um, but you don't have to have high production values and spend a lot of money to do something like that. Interestingly enough, with Isotrack, we didn't do a uh, a night in the life of; we actually did a day in the life of. So, for Isotrack again, rather than showing all of these products and stuff like that, we completely turned it on its head. And we said, well, let's show the customer's typical day. Let's build their, um, a model of their working life. You're in logistics, you're sending trucks and vans around cities, um, you're trying to manage drivers, you're trying to manage loads, you're trying to manage delivery times. So we literally, we started off at the depot at 6 a.m. with all the trucks loading up, how Isotrack makes sure that you've got the right drivers in the right trucks. And just down here where we've got sort of profitability, service delivery, sustainability, risk management, those are key business metrics for any business involved in logistics. So actually what we were able to do throughout the day is start to fill those little bits up. So sort of subliminally we're saying with Isotrack, actually, you know, you're ticking off your sustainability, you're ticking off risk management. And we could go through various scenarios um, on the left hand side, this is actually the, the product, so it's got a small feature. So it just shows you sort of the uh, inside the driver's cab. So they've got tablets, the braking systems, they have cameras. So we kind of weaved in the product, but it's completely from the customer's perspective. They can actually play with this model and they can say, oh, well, we don't actually do home deliveries. We do major supermarket deliveries. No problem. They just click that and it goes through that section and shows them exactly where their pain points are and where Isotrack subtly sits underneath all of that and solves their problem and sorts out their risk management and sustainability or what have you. So all of this is about experiences. It's experiences that stand out. And as consumers and businesses, you know, we're always looking beyond the product. You know, we want partners that can create opportunities, that can talk to me as an individual, as well as to the business, and can illustrate the impact on my customers of my working with you. So it's not just about me as a business, I'm also thinking about my customers, so I want to make sure that you understand that. How are you making my customers' lives better? 
And ultimately, you've got to do it very clearly, concisely, and if you can, in a very visual and memorable way. But I think before you know, you kind of let your creative juices going and stuff like that, um, it still comes down to the message, to the narrative. That's the key. All of these fancy graphics, all of that, it's completely irrelevant and useless unless you've got that narrative, unless you've got that action in place. So before I wrap up, there's really two things that I would like you to take away from what I've said. The first is action. Really understand the objective. Drill down. Don't just paint this broad picture. We want a new client. We want to win this piece of business. It's more complex than that. It's much more nuanced. You need to ask those questions to really drill down, to get under the skin, into the mind of the people that you're talking to and perspective. You know, ultimately, we're all talking to individuals. We're all individuals. So you've got to personalise the conversation around them. It's all about the customer. It's got nothing to do with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>